Back with us now, Arkansas Republican Rick Crawford. He's on House Transportation and Infrastructure. Congressman, it looks like the infrastructure deal is falling apart because Senator Bernie Sanders says no dice to Senator Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is saying the president, you got to force Schumer and Nancy Pelosi back down. You can't hold an infrastructure deal hostage to their big spending plans. That's not deal making. That's hostage taking. The president did walk the threat back the threat of a veto. What is going to happen here? What do you think? Well, it's hard to say. It's interesting to know that the, the, the loudest voices on this infrastructure debate are coming from members who don't even serve on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee in the House. In, in the House T&I Committee, there's not a single member of the squad, and yet they're the ones that seem to be uh, attempting to steer this their way, and, and they're getting some help from Bernie Sanders on the other side of the Capitol. So, uh, you know, when there's a crisis, the first question people ask is, who's in charge here? And we're not getting an answer from the president. It looks to me as though the squad and Bernie Sanders are calling the shots, and we just can't have that. Yeah, Mitt Romney's saying the Republicans are not going to go for all of this. Again, this isn't deal making. It feels like hostage taking. You know, so are yeah. they botching the recovery? They botch the shutdowns. Restaurants and bars and small businesses can't hire workers. People are being paid to stay at home. Those are facts. Studies are showing this. This is happening across the country. It's forced, it's gotten 26 states to say no more federal jobless benefits. Enough is enough. The Missouri governor is saying it's harming the recovery, paying people to stay home. And now we've got Clinton and Obama's former Treasury secretaries, Robert Rubin and Larry Summers, saying high inflation is here to stay. Larry Summers is talking about 5% inflation by the end of the year from all this high velocity government spending. What do you say, Congressman? Well, this government spending, I think we need to go back to 2008 and think about uh, the housing crisis that led to, uh, up to this point, a 300 percent increase in the national debt, which is now at $28 trillion roughly. That's going to be the single biggest line item uh, in our budget, uh, surpassing even defense. And, and there's not been a single proposal on how we expect to pay for this infrastructure spending that people like Senator Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders and uh, the squad are proposing. So this is, uh, and, and President Biden seems to be going along with this. That's what concerns me the most about this is that uh, you want to talk about human infrastructure. If you're concerned about human infrastructure, which the president has indicated he's coined that new term, then you know be thinking about what your, your spending proposal is going to do to human infrastructure with regard to this perpetual inflation. Yeah, it's an important point you just made because that's a tax on the middle class, effectively, inflation. Absolutely. You know, Senator Rand Paul says stop. Yeah, Senator Rand Paul is saying stop the spending in places like Afghanistan, bring the spending home. Let's listen to Axios reporter Jonathan Swan here, um, along with Senator Bill Cassidy on what's going on. Watch this. There's bipartisan opposition to the non-hard infrastructure portion of their bill. Bipartisan in both chambers. That's number one. Number two, Republicans think that portion is bad for our country. We have an inflation rate that is higher than it's been in quite some time, and that bill would make it higher. I spoke to Republicans and Democrats who were involved in those negotiations. They couldn't believe it when, when Joe Biden said this. I mean, it is, you know, we should acknowledge, astonishing to basically present this deal as nirvana, you know, the greatest deal that's ever been struck, you know, essential for the American people. And then, you know, in a sort of very short period of time, say, but, but I'm not going to sign it unless it simultaneously uh, arrives on my desk with, with this other separate bill for social spending. So, listen, people want to help middle class families. You want to help mm -hmm. families out there with children and more. But the point is, there's a wish list of of a lot of unnecessary stuff in here. Is it your point that it's the squad, it's Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren who are really controlling things, controlling Nancy Pelosi, controlling Chuck Schumer, controlling Biden even? Is that your point? Well, I think there's a realization that they may have this one opportunity to get everything they want because they're on very shaky ground with regard to uh, holding their majority. And so I think they're going to go for broke here, uh, literally and figuratively. I think they're going to, you know, put everything they possibly can into this and hope that they can get it passed, hope that they have some folks on, on the Senate side that will waver, yeah. hope that they can get the filibuster to crumble, and, and then they'll get their way. And, and we just can't sustain this. Our economy is in no position to sustain this level of spending without any proposal for pay for. 
Yeah, you're going to have to tax the middle class to pay for it. Congressman Rick Crawford, mm -hmm. it's good to see you. Come back soon. It's great to have you on.